Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is HUD? HUD is a class. It basically stands for Heads Up Display, and it's used for user interface events. Usually cosmetic only, things that are on your screen that your user cannot interact with. The HUD class is a legacy class from Unreal Engine 3 and Unreal Development Kit. It was in place before UMG was created for Unreal Engine 4 and pretty much has been replaced by UMG. However, it is still part of the engine, it's still part of the game flow, and it has some uses that you may want to use it for. So let's go ahead and look at an example. We'll hit play. We'll find a few things on my screen. Every time the draw function is called, I'm printing out draw. I have a widget up here, a UMG widget, and then I have right here our actual HUD class displaying a crosshair. Let me go ahead and close this and let me turn my tick back on inside of my HUD class and hit play. You'll notice it now says draw tick, draw tick, draw tick. The draw and the tick pretty much happen every single frame. They're going to be back and forth. But keep in mind the draw function is separate than the tick function. If we disable the tick, we still get our draw. Let me select this and you'll notice they're both running. The way the draw HUD event works is every time it's called, it will do everything inside of here. It's not going to cache anything. It's not going to not do it because it's already done it. It's updated every single time it's called. If you've ever used Unity, it's like the older on GUI setup where basically it would refresh the user interface every frame. And that's what this does. Now in terms of working, let me go ahead and disable the tick again just so it's not there and we'll show the draw running it has nodes that allow you to do things we have ability to draw lines materials rectangles text and textures and we also have some shortcuts for getting some things now all of those are covered separately you'll notice we basically have all of these sections here and they're all covered in their own individual videos for the most part, we're just going to cover what the HUD class gives you and what you might use it for, and then some features that are hidden, which is really annoying, to be honest. Looking at here, we find the HUD has two options, Show HUD and Enable Debug Text Shadow. Going to our palette, we find we have these options. If we were to, for example, want to show or hide the HUD, we could type in Show HUD and we'll get access to the variables for the HUD. These will not show up on here because they have to be called on a specific instance of a HUD. So they're kind of hidden. So you do have access to showing and hiding the HUD, showing the overlays, debug info, hitbox debug info. And I'll cover what these do here shortly, but only if you have access to the HUD directly. So keep that in mind. If I was to, for example, type in, um, you know, I was in my character, for example, and I wanted to do show HUD or hide HUD, it has to be done off of the HUD itself. Now, this is a good place to show the HUD itself and why we might want to use it. Because the HUD itself is part of our game mode, if I go into my game mode, we have a HUD class. By default, it's going to be HUD, and I've changed this over to my custom version. Because it's part of the game mode and it's always there, we have easy access to it. We grab our player controller, we ask it for the HUD, and we get the HUD. Now, once we've gotten the HUD, we can do a few things. In terms of showing and hiding the HUD, we have sort of a problem that may annoy you, and let me show you this. When we run our example, here's our HUD, our little crosshair. If I go into my details panel and uncheck show HUD and run it, it's still gonna be there. For whatever reason, in the code, the HUD is enabled by default. It's always gonna show. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. So you have to get the HUD after it's been created and then disable it or simply not going to, or, or the option to show and hide right here doesn't work basically. Let me show you what I mean by that. Go into our player, you, uh, our character. I've hooked up this setting. I'm basically grabbing my HUD, seeing if it's currently shown or not and flipping it when I set the show HUD. We'll hit play and I'll hit E 
and you'll notice our crosshair disappears. So that's how you would toggle your HUD on and off. Now you will notice a few things here. When it's on, we're drawing, and when it's off, after two seconds of print, it disappears. Basically, that's what it does. It disables our event draw HUD function. You'll notice our widget is still showing though. Our widget is independent of the HUD. They can coexist, but they are independent of each other. Now in terms of how that works, if we go back into my HUD, let me unhook this and drag it down a little bit to my draw. I'm gonna draw a rectangle on the screen. And this rectangle will be here. I can show and hide it, but you'll notice it's behind our widget. Basically, you have your widget drawn on top of your HUD, which is drawn on top of your game viewport. So keep that in mind. When you're laying things out, that's the way it's set up. Let's go ahead and we will go back into our character and look at other options. And we have three other ones that are primarily used. Our next one is going to be the debug info. Now, if we show the debug info, when I hit E, we get this nice little debug info screen. This basically shows some default debug info that people may want to know. Things such as player controller, what's being controlled by the player character, where that's currently at, what the current game state is, and things like that. So in this case, you can see where our location is of our controller and our character. We can see that we're currently playing, and you can see other things like that. So it's useful if you if you are debugging some information that's built into the engine, this is how you would display it. Show hitbox debug info is useful if you're using hitboxes. Now this is not going to cover how the hitboxes work, but we're just simply going to cover what this node does. When I hook this up, we're going to have a hitbox. This is our hitbox and it does stuff. If I hit the E button, this is what my debug info does. It shows me the name of my hitbox shows my mouse over and leave events. And then when I click on it, this action works because that's the way I've set it up. The debug info basically is showing us no debug info and then debug info. It allows us to verify hitboxes are working properly. And I mentioned they are working properly because with hitboxes, you have the ability to see if they're clicked. You have the ability to see if the mouse cursor was let go, so you've clicked down and release. You have the ability to see if the cursor was over it and leaving it. Going back to our character, we have one last option. Unfortunately, I cannot show you this option. If we were to run this and hit E, nothing's going to happen. Remember how I mentioned that this is a leftover from the older version of Unreal Engine. Well, this is also one of those things that was left over. Unfortunately, this can only be accessed right now via C++ and code. You cannot access it via blueprints. What this does is it allows you to render actor overlay stuff on the HUD. So for example, if you wanted to put a position over an actor, using the HUD system, you would have to register that actor with the HUD for rendering, and then you would display the information on the actor. Fortunately, you cannot register it inside of Blueprints, only in C++. So basically, if you do know, do want to register actors for overlay, HUD text, and HUD drawings, and you're using C++, you can toggle it on and off in Blueprints using this option, but you can't actually create those overlays and the registrations inside of pure Blueprints. So this is primarily for C++ people to turn this option on and off. It's unfortunate, but that's what it is. And again, this is a legacy system, so it's not that big of a deal. Going back into our HUD, we do have two convenience functions, if I can figure out where I put them which I'm pretty sure I didn't. Okay, so yeah, here we go. So the HUD itself has basically three convenience functions. You have the ability to get the HUD by asking the player controller. We showed that one already. You can get the owning pawn. This is who owns this HUD. And then you can get the owning player's controller. So basically which controller owns this HUD. And there's a useful when you're inside of the HUD to determine the appropriate things. For example, you don't want to just get the player controller 
because player controller zero may not be the person who owns this HUD. So that's important to know. This is whoever's connected directly to this HUD. And since this HUD is displaying on the appropriate pawn or controller, these are the nodes you'd use when you want to get access to the pawn or controller inside of the HUD. Other than that, that's going to wrap up our HUD video. This is a legacy node, a legacy class, once again, like I've mentioned. It has some useful features. We will cover them individually in their individual nodes. But in terms of using it, it would be great for a debugging system. Really easily to just put text on the screen, put a location of the player on the screen, do something like that, where you easily want to just show something, but you don't need control over displaying or hiding it or any fancy animations, stuff like that.